Good evening, classic film lovers, classic horror lovers. I'm Antonia Carlotta. This is Universally Me. And today, we're going to talk about a lesser known legend. What I mean by that, we spend a lot of time on my channel talking about the big names and the big monsters. Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, Lon Chaney. Today, we're talking about Conrad Veidt, which is a name that many of you may have never heard of, but he is a legend. He should be up there with the rest of them. He inspired the Joker and Disney's Jafar, and he was a great man, and he did not get enough time here on Earth. So let's dig in to the life of Conrad Veidt. Conrad Veidt was born January 22nd, 1893 in Berlin, Germany. For a brief time, he hoped to become a surgeon in honor of a surgeon who helped his father when they were unable to afford surgery. But his grades weren't that of a budding surgeon, and his plan changed after performing in a school Christmas play in which he was the standout. He began taking classes and getting bit parts in plays, but when World War I broke out, he enlisted in the army until 1917. When he got out, he immediately returned to the theater and then made the transition to silent film. His reputation started to grow. He played Frederick Chopin in Nocturno de Liba, he played Phineas Fogg in Around the World in 80 Days, and he portrayed one of the first explicitly gay characters ever, indifferent from the others. And all of this was just in 1919. By 1920, he would be cast in the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, one of the most important roles of his life. The cabinet of Dr. Caligari is considered quintessential German expressionist cinema, and it had a huge influence on universal horror. Because Conrad Veidt had so much experience in expressionist theater, he shined in this role. He became known as the demon of the silver screen, and soon his face would be known around the world. He made his first trip to Hollywood in 1926 to act in The Beloved Rogue opposite John Barrymore. He was being courted by all of the major studios, but it was Uncle Carl at Universal who won. Conrad Veidt signed for $2,000 a week, and he made three movies with them. If the cabinet of Dr. Caligari put Conrad Veidt on the map, it was the man who laughs that cemented his legacy as a master of expression. As Gwynplaine, Veidt brought to life a character trapped in a perpetual smile, a role that required him to act through layers of makeup and a dental contraption that hooked his mouth up at the corners, created by the incomparable Jack Pierce. Somehow, he conveyed so much without being able to talk. I mean, he couldn't even move his face. It is reminiscent of Lon Chaney in the best of ways. When talkies came on the scene, Conrad Veidt moved back to Germany, knowing that he would have better luck there since he struggled with English and he had a pretty thick accent. By this time in his personal life, Conrad Veidt had already been married once to a cabaret performer named Gussie Hall. But while grieving the death of his mother in 1922 and with his career on the upswing, he was admittedly not the best husband. He married his second wife, Felicitas Radke, in 1923, and they had a daughter, Viola. They were married for almost 10 years, but they moved frequently for work, and Conrad was gone a lot for work. It caused a rift in their marriage, and they got divorced in 1932. As his marriage fell apart, he accepted work in England, where he learned English and started working steadily. He married a woman named Lily, with whom he would stay for the rest of his life. Lily was Jewish, and it was a scary time to be a Jew in Europe. Conrad Veidt was told if he divorced his wife and declared his loyalty to the new regime, he could continue acting in Germany. Instead, he declared his loyalty to his wife. He started identifying as Jewish, even adding it to his race on his official identification card. In 1938, he became a British citizen, and he made two films there before it became too dangerous for he and his wife to remain in the UK either. The two escaped to Hollywood, but before they left, he donated much of his personal fortune to help finance the British war efforts. When Conrad Veidt fled London, he was working on The Thief of Baghdad, and the entire production ultimately relocated to Hollywood. His work as Jafar in The Thief of Baghdad inspired Jafar in Disney's Aladdin. Outside of The Thief of Baghdad, Conrad Veidt started playing Nazis, the very people he hated. 
His most famous was Major Strasser in Casablanca. What a strange twist of fate to suddenly be praised for playing the very people who forced you to leave your homeland. Knowing his accent would cause this typecasting, he had it mandated in his contract that all Nazis he played had to be villains. Conrad Veidt had the same heart condition that killed his mother in 1922, and it was aggravated by his smoking. On April 3rd, 1943, while golfing at the Riviera Country Club, Conrad Veidt died suddenly of a heart attack, and he was only 50 years old. Today, when Conrad Veidt is remembered, he's most remembered for inspiring the Joker and the Man Who Laughs, or Jafar in The Thief of Baghdad, but I think he should be remembered for so much more. I already mentioned how he donated so much to the British War Fund. He also donated thousands of dollars in toys, gifts, and actual money to children in need in air raid shelters. He supported the European Film Fund, co-founded by Uncle Carl Lemley, which helped European refugees who needed affidavits, money, or jobs. He helped his relatives and friends escape Nazi-occupied Europe. He used all of the power and money that he gained playing Nazis on screen to fight Nazis off screen. Conrad Veidt's story is one of bravery through and through. His commitment to his craft, to his convictions, it left a legacy that leaves me inspired and wanting to know more. His name and his work, they aren't known the way that we know Boris Karloff or Bela Lugosi or Lon Chaney. But the more that I learned, the more I really think it should be. So what is the missing ingredient that keeps Conrad Veidt from getting the recognition he deserves? Let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta and join the Lemley family on Patreon or YouTube memberships for bonus content. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.